welcome to the program. This is What's Your Story. My name is Catherine Mwangi here on KTN Home. We have the privilege to now have a conversation with the general manager of Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa, Mr. Francis Msengeti. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Your journey with this Sarova group is long. It feels like a full circle moment for you. When I read your profile about coming here for a short time, then being posted elsewhere, then coming back here. So it's almost like a full circle, but we'll get there. Let me start with your background. Tell me about your life in school, Mr. Captain. School well, Captain. <laughs> yes, I was close to that. I was close to that uh, level. I, yeah. I was aspiring too, but I was a deputy school captain. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's where I started practicing leadership and, you know, learning about uh, how to manage, uh, especially boys, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's where I began my journey into leadership. Yeah. yeah. What, are you, what is your favorite uh, memory of high school? Well, apart from visiting day, <laughs> I think that's most memorable for everyone. I can't remember. The food, so as a captain, things. you had special food, right? No. No? Actually, well, yes, we had uh, the, the option okay. to take, you know, different uh, food. Uh -huh. But I ended up, uh, most of the times, eating with... Uh, the, rest the rest of the guys? Yes. Why? One, because um, uh, the school where I was in, uh, where I was the captain, uh -huh. uh, it was uh, a place where I was a bit um, more experienced in school. Not older, but more experienced in school. See, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd done four years in one school, then went back to, to standard, you know, form three, and then did another two years. You repeated? Uh, yeah. Why? Well, well the, I always say that um, the first school was learning life, and the second school was doing school studies. <laughs> but that was not it. It's because I, I had aspired for something. I okay. wanted to be something else. And I felt that I was not, uh, you know, 844, you had to get some marks and to get yeah. this and all this stuff. Yeah. So I decided, like, let me go back to school. Okay. But also because, um, to be honest, the uh, biggest impact in my life has been with, by my father. Uh -huh. uh, all boys, you know, my father yes. and everything. And uh, my father had challenged me to, to, to be whatever I wanted to be. And I think he... He felt, you know, when uh, we discussed my schooling and everything, he felt that uh, I needed to get, to, put, to be given more pressure. Oh. Yes, and uh, so he, he, he did it. And that challenged me to go back to school. Wait, so you passed Form 4 in School A, and then you went back two years in School B? Well, passing in 844 was a relative term. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I went through from four. Okay. In one school, then went to the next, and um, yeah, so I was a bit more experienced in school life. <laughs> Being, you know, I realized, I realized that you know, to to work with boys, you have to be among the boys. Okay. Yeah? And um, yeah, that was why I was keeping away from the kind of the privileges at that point. And uh, you know, learning to to work with the team. Yes. And being the position I was as a number two, I, I had more freedom to, to be able to be who I want to be. You know, mm. um, being yeah. top in an organization restricts you. Yeah. To some extent. Yeah. To some things you cannot be able to do something. Yeah. But your number two is able to be. Uh, free, Leeway yes, and okay. To, to, to uh, spread their wings more. Yeah. I couldn't wait to get out of high school. You you spent six years in high school, man. Yes. Okay, yes. so that. Well, it's um, in between. There was a break. Okay. So I I got out of one school, uh, went out, did some work, and then uh, earned the school fees and went back to school. So okay. The kind of life. Yeah. Yeah. I, of course, I could not go back to my father and tell him I want to go back to school <laughs> and I want you to pay for it. So I had to say, uh, boss, let me get the money, let me, then let me go back to school and do what I want to do. So you paid your own fees for those two years? Yes, one and a half. Yes, let's put it about, kind of like, yeah. Wow. One, one year, some two months. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the school I went to, the headmaster told me, that uh, told me, look, you cannot go into fourth form to do whatever you want to do. Uh, I can put you in, but I don't think you'll have enough momentum to, mm, to get so you to, have to. Yeah, so he gave me a few months to start, yeah. and then finish, and told me, look, I'll put you uh, because of your experiences. I'll put you into leadership and all this. So that kind of eased the pain of going 
<laughs> through school, so to speak. That's amazing. Yeah. I haven't, haven't met anybody who, who loved high school as much as you sound like you did. Love is, uh, <laughs> you know, I had a hated relationship with school. You know? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I see. So you've mentioned about your relationship with your dad. Yes. What I know is most boys actually have a closer relationship with your mom, with their moms. Mm. Uh, but, but you seem to have had a harmonious one with your father. And you, you attribute him as your greatest inspiration? Yes. Okay. What kind of relationship did you guys enjoy? Well, it was, um, I'll not put it as, he, let me put it this way. He mm -hmm. understood me. He understood that uh, for me to, to, to get where I want to be is not, he, he was the traditional father. They will not you know, give hugs and, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, sit down, sit you down and talk to you. No, no, no. He will tell you, point blank, uh, where you are wrong. And in some instances, knowing th that you need, that will inspire you, will tell you, you're not going to get anywhere. The way you're going, yeah. uh, you're going to go into a ditch. <laughs> you, you know, or uh, a few cans on, you know, the softer parts of your body. Those will happen. Mm -hmm. Those were happening mm -hmm. a lot of times. Okay. But again, growing where I grew up, we needed that. And we are a family of uh, several boys. So yes. We needed that uh, for us to be uh, you know, uh, inspired. Yes. So he had so many ways of getting us uh, to focus. Yes. You know? Okay. Uh, one of the things which we, um, me and my brothers, uh, say is that he, he kept on telling us that the only inheritance I'm giving you is education. Wow. And he insisted on it. And that's what we focused on. So some, some of those things are mm. what drove us uh, yes. what we are right now. Yes. As, um, you know, as a family, uh, eh? As a family. Yeah. Two was, uh, he, keeps on, he kept on saying, look, uh, family, family. And um, later in life, when we grew up, mm -hmm. we understood that family for him didn't mean us mm -hmm. only. Family meant the bigger, community, uh, uh, scope, community, people who are you are responsible for, uh, people who feel that they are responsible for you. Yeah, they are all family, yeah. and uh, you had to work with family. Yeah, in mind. Mm. so he made a lot of sacrifices for his family, the bigger family. And later on in life, we came to realize that. I grew up in a house where we would, at any one time, there'll be five, six people who are not related, you know? They're being taken care of by your yes. parents. Yeah, yeah. you're growing with them. Yeah. And it was natural for, uh, for us. Then I came to realize that was actually not <laughs> something which is done it's easily. It's not usual. It's not yeah. usual. Yeah. So, uh, that's how we, we grew mm. up. And that dictated a lot of our later life. Mm. Uh, what can you tell me about your mom? Mom was the daily influence, yeah. And uh, my mom was a perfect is and was then when my father was alive was a perfect tag team partner for my dad. Oh wow! Uh, having you know boys and in the environment we were growing in, yeah, she was um, the person who made sure that we understood how to to move mm. in life. Yeah? Mm. So she would. Um, Every day she would tell us something which was driving us in terms of uh, our morals. Yes. Yeah? She would uh, ensure that we prayed, for instance. She would ensure that as boys, if we did something wrong, we will pay for it, <laughs> you know? Consequences. I'll give you a story. So, yes, please. Uh, every day, uh, if we, every time we did something wrong, yeah, my father would know. And he would wonder, how did this guy know? Mm -hmm. So you know, and he'd know some details which, how did this guy know? Yeah. Only to realize that every time he came home, <laughs> well, we go in, say hi to everyone, then yes. he disappears to his bedroom and yeah. comes out. And when he comes out, he has the whole script. So <laughs> mother will brief him. And we never ever, ever thought yeah. that actually my mother was the weak point. It's the one briefing, our, giving the brief. <laughs> So by the time you're getting your discipline, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you like, 
this guy knows. And so one time he took us to his workplace. Mm -hmm. And that time was the advent of computers. Okay. And there's this small screen, you know, managing uh, the equipment, the uh, big machinery, and you, I think, you know, numbers and stuff was on the screen. Mm -hmm. And there was a picture of something. Yeah. On it. And then, look, this is how I see you guys. All what you do at home, I see it on this screen. <laughs> <laughs> from then on, we knew that yeah. we hundred percent knew yeah. that the guy who sits in his office and looks and at sees us, what he uh, gets. By then, there was no CCTV. Remember? So <laughs> <laughs> oh, tied down. Is, uh, it's your mother who was. So the they CCTV. were attacked team, eh? Really? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. And, well, uh, she was. Uh, you know, till today, she's as all mothers are the best chef you ever know. Ah. Um, she has this, uh, and I think all mothers uh, has this elephantine memory. So she remembers every little detail. Mm -hmm. You know, she remembers my birthday when I forget it. She remembers anything, you know, uh -huh. and everything. Wow. Uh, she's um, in our community uh, where I come from. Yeah. Uh, again, family is a big thing. So mm. she was able to integrate mm. where she was married. So ah. eventually, everybody call her mom. Uh, everybody at home, every, nobody knows her. By her name. By her name yeah. or by normally you'll be called by your first kid's name. Yes. Mama so and so. Yes. No, uh -uh. She's known as mom, so mom by everybody. Oh. Yeah, so. Kind of is a killer in the community. Yes. That kind of thing. Yes. She, everything involves around um, her. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Hey, you had a very colorful and stable childhood growing up, from yes. the sound of it. From the sound yes. of it. Yes. Yeah. Managed well. I think we we were managed. Being many kids, you are. Yeah. You know, a family of eight. We were managed very well. So, to speak. Mm. Mm. so which parts of you are your mom and which parts of you are your dad? Like who do you take mostly after? So wow. I think I'm a good mix of both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a good mix of both. Mm -hmm. In some instances I'm a dad. In some uh, when it comes to um, Personality? Personality I think yeah, I'm a mix of both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're a mix, that's mm. nice. How many siblings? We eight. Eight boys? No, no. Uh, oh. Four boys. <laughs> oh, so it's half and four, half. Four. Mm. Nice. So at what point did you know that you wanted to do this, what you're doing now? First, did you even see it after, after your six years in high school? Mm. Did you see this as your path? You know, hospitality, uh, tourism hospitality, just uh, being in the kind of industry that involves a lot of people. Yeah. Was this your, was this you? So. Some of my friends tell me when I was in school, I had mentioned it, but oh. I don't remember it. Okay. But I said, I'll one day be out of here. I don't remember it because um, growing up in Mombasa and um, I went to a school next door, Shimolateo. Okay. This was White Sands. Is near here? Yeah, just near. It's about, uh, I can actually walk there. Okay. You know, uh, I'm a proud old boy, Shimolateo old boy, you know, and um, when we were growing up, we used to come to Pirates, which is just around the corner, you know, and that was uh, a cure-all for everything <laughs> on a weekend, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you, you see hoteliers, you see hotels, and at that time also, uh, a lot of companies had this scheme where they will award their best performing staff uh, a voucher to go to a hotel. So my father will get these vouchers yeah. and we would come to White Sands Travelers. You know, most of these hotels around wow. here. Just a drink or something, whatever it is, you know, swimming. You know, so mm -hmm. we would interact with hotels at that time. But I never had that, I don't remember having that urge to actually do that. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, so my second stint after high school. Mm -hmm. Again, I went back to working in garages. I was working in, you know, uh, Juakali in Mombasa. Fixing cars? Uh, fixing cars and every other thing which falls under Juakali. I was basically a um, you know, handyman. And um, so at that time, where I was working, uh, something was happening. Uh, there was a change. Uh, the, the ground was being taken over, and so there was some upheavals in our business. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
I decided to, I, I need to go to uh, further my studies in something okay. to, and learn how because I started because um, at that time in Jokali industry a lot of the guys were not really the schooling was not that uh, advanced yes. so they would come to me saying let's do uh, can, how do we do a quotation uh, I've been told I'm, I'm chasing a tender how do I you know feel it mm. and I started seeing this thing mm. so I wanted to learn a bit of uh, management okay. so I started looking for that I said I'm probably going to be out of work for some time let me go back to school, school and learn a bit more in terms of uh, the back end yes. of business wow what comes up uh, Kenya Tali College so I go through the hotel management course and I see there's accounting there's this that and things okay they 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 go oh four years uh, four years anyway I apply just you know out of chance and for sure I just went through the stages before long I went into what? Uh, the Kenya Tali College as a, a student and that was my first time interacting the back end of a hotel. Uh -huh. yeah. And it was strange to me because I'm coming from the Jokali industry yes. where everything is hammer, yes. everything is a lot of yeah. uh, strength here, yeah, you need finesse. And I did not have that finesse. Everything was, you know, you, you discuss things and you put a lot of uh, emphasis in what you want to get. Yes. You are uh, in the hotel industry, you have to have a win-win situation. So uh, turning me down yeah. was a big <laughs> part of my first year. Second year in uh, college, I had to, uh, you know, close my mouth most times <laughs> and learn more. <laughs> bit, OK. Yes. So wait a minute. So. So you, so the Jokali sector, and what, I mean, where you worked, mm. uh, going through the changes it was going through, forced mm. you, or rather inspired you, to look for ways to on how to manage a business. Yes. And then, as you're looking for those ways, you come across Kenya Hotel College. Yes. Then you decide, ah, I can do hotel management. Yes, I said, look, hotel management has a lot more. Uh -huh. You know, it's not just about uh, uh -huh. you know, service. service is a integral part of yes. it. Yes. But there's also managing the business aspect of it. So that is what attracted me. I'm like, okay, here I can learn managing the business. And anyways, I've been interacting with hotels. Yes. Not realizing I've only been interacting on the front end. Yes. Yeah, when you come to visit, yes. Yes. Not knowing there's a massive uh, bit at the back. So I go into it innocently, knowing that I can, this one, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Four years, four years is good in my life, four years. Yeah. I've been in Nairobi, that was my first time to go into Nairobi. Oh, as, you know. okay. So when I was going to college, and I'm like, I'll be in Nairobi, I'll learn new things, I'll learn, you know. Yeah. So when I come back to doing this business, if I want to, it's a fallback plan, yes. I know it. I don't have to, I've done it twice now. Yeah. So no problem. Oh, wow. I can take a four year hiatus and come back. Yeah. yeah. And little did you know there was no coming back to that business. Yes. It started being an upward scale in now the hotel industry. But I'll tell you one thing. Tell me. Having done that time in the Juakali sector, that is a knowledge which helps me massively in. In this I day do. and age? Yes. Hotels are, there's a lot, it, 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 it integrates everything, yeah? So you would, uh, you have to interact with the fundies, you know, the workmen. You have to interact with, you have to know how to manage people, uh, both the customers and your staff. Um, you have to know how to manage suppliers, you know. So all this, the Juakali sector teaches you. Uh, mm. Anybody who comes from that, that background uh, is very strong in whatever they do. Whatever it is, they learn from there. Now, that's one thing I used when I'm interviewing uh, 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 candidates. You know, candidates mm. uh. So ask them, what have you done? You mm. finished school and to the time you joined college, what were you doing? Yeah. Or you finished college to the time now you're coming to talk to me, yeah. what have you been doing? Uh -huh. Mostly the strong candidates would find the, uh, this, like the other day, there was mm -hmm. a lady who was telling me she was uh, running um, a business. So mm -hmm. I asked her what business. She was selling uh, ice lollies, barafu, we call them mm -hmm. Mombasa, mm -hmm. uh, the, the yeah. ice lollies, in Likoni, you know? And that was her business. Yeah? I know how difficult that job yes. is. It's not something you can actually 
you just go into it like yeah. this and the survivor so asked how long have you been doing this so about one year wow. she's been running that business wow and you know she's uh, all dolled up you know for the interview yeah. so i'm imagining <laughs> uh, so i asked her so what happened today with the business she said, look uh, they're in the coolers uh, they're freezing right yeah. now and i go back i'll pick go my sell. my uh, cooler box and go out oh wow like oh wow you know how then you know so i'm asking her the way you're looking right now you know yeah says, no 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 and i get home of course i will change and get into a more yeah uh, into the zone now yes, yes. So somebody like that, you know, they will get successful in life. Whether they will be with you or with somebody else, yes. they will go somewhere. Yeah, because of so that resilience. Can, yes, they've learned resilience. Mm. They've learned how to make the most of everything. Yes, yeah. I see. Wow. So you finished four years of um, college at Utali. Mm. And then what was your first stint? First, after they taught you how to kunyamaza, mm. <laughs> not to be a mjuaji. Not to be a mjuaji, <laughs> 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 you got to learn. This is, all of the managers I had uh, when I was training uh -huh. told me, uh, go back to being a tailor or whatever it is you are before. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first sec or second month. Uh, yeah. Because when you go into college, yeah. you, uh, there's this called uh, uh, Industrial Familiarization Program. Okay. FP. Mm. So, because they know you do not know nothing yes. about hoteliering. So they, they post you to hotels. So I was posted to one uh, five star hotel at that time. Uh -huh. And uh, zero knowledge of whatever. So mm -hmm. I messed up, goofed up <laughs> every little interaction I had anywhere. I was goofing up in yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy told me, boss, <laughs> this one, you're not going to get it. <laughs> Go back. Wherever you came from. Yes. <laughs> but he persevered. Yeah, but you see, that's what I was telling you that my father knew. Huh? If you tell me that, then I want to show you I can be. Uh, and that uh, is the guy who made me now mm, pushed me to be yes. because at, at that time I was like I'm not getting this. Ah, I see. Like when he wanted me to learn how to drive, he told me you're not gonna drive my car. <laughs> okay. I'm never going to drive my car. Okay. I was like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to drive you in my car. <laughs> That's what I told you. I'm going to drive you in my car. Mm. So eventually, I did that. Then he gave me his car to drive. <laughs> so we'll take a short commercial break as, as you have the wonderful drink that your team has yeah. given us. When we come back, we go through your journey. Now we show the audience how your life has literally been full circle. From Garage KYM to running this global brand. So yeah. you get to know that, what it takes. Mm -hmm. And to you watching, thank you so much. You can catch the story ongoing on our YouTube platform at this point in time. Don't go too far. We'll be back after this commercial break. Welcome back from the break. It's What's Your Story on KTN. I'm Catherine Mwangi. We are speaking with Francis Msengeti, the general manager of Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa. We've identified his beginnings, his childhood, his family, and now we want to go into his career path that led him all the way here. Um, thank you, first of all, for your hospitality. You've, you've done an incredible job, your team and yourself, just hosting us. Uh, we are grateful for that. So you finished Utali, mm -hmm. and now you are certified to start your journey as a hotelier. Yes. Where did it start? So. Uh, my first posting was in the lodges. Which brand? With uh, Serena. Aha, uh -huh. okay, yeah. okay. Uh, I did four years with them and I was uh, in working in uh, the lodges, okay. basic, basically. Uh -huh. yeah. So I started in Amboseli, then uh, Samburu, uh, went into Tanzania. Okay. And then uh, came, I left Serena actually when I was in Tanzania. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So that how well, how was that experience? You know, born here, born, raised, school here. Yeah. Worked here a bit. Go to college in Nairobi, and now you're in the Bundus, a different part of town. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, not too difficult okay. because growing up, uh, a lot of times you are, not a lot of times actually, all the holidays. Mm -hmm. Practically all the holidays we were in Shags. My father was a traditional. Where is uh, Shags? Shags in Taita. So like so, the coastal region? Yes, and okay. that's next to Savo. So ah. you interact a lot of The animals and nature? Yes. Hey. 
Okay. So we, nature was a part of me growing up. Every three months of the year, you'd be in nature. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were actually on the edge of Savo. Wow. And that way, going into uh, Amboseli was not a big, big deal for me. Uh, I met the Maasai in Amboseli, and I really loved the uh, kind of the community setup. And I realized it's not very far from what we were. That was the ty first time I was interacting with a community that deep. Yeah? Okay. And uh, from then on, it was kind of, I loved being in the lodges. Yeah? Uh, it took me a long time to be able to transition from the lodge life to now, uh, you know, in hotels, in uh, the hospitality industry in Kenya, there is uh, people who are lodge managers or yes. uh, who run lodges, yeah? Yeah. lodge management. There are people who run resorts, resort management. Okay. And then there are people who are run hotels okay. in town. Okay. So I qualify that. Okay. The ah. hotel management. Okay. All these are senior management. Yes. They are all doing kind of the same thing, but different locations. Yes. Different subtle uh, differences, differences in uh, yeah. what you do. Uh. So I was into lodge management, big time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that was, for me, was more. You know, when they say you do something, you do something. When you do something you love to do, you don't work. Yeah, it's yeah. like leisure so, living. Yes. Yeah. It was. It's, it was fun. You know, lodge management was fun for me. You know, and uh, a lot of uh, things which uh, we were doing, some because we were young enough to do them. Uh, yeah. Me and my colleagues in a management level, uh -huh. we were doing some uh, things which uh, older managers were frowning upon. And, what, um, why did you laugh? There was a laugh you did there. What kind of things were you doing? No, you what know, memory you, came? It's uh, <laughs> things like you, you wake up, uh, you, you work till very late at night. Okay. And you are, it's 11 o'clock, you guys have finished work, you still have energy to have drinks. And you know, the next morning, <laughs> you have a breakfast at, uh, you know, at the river crossing um, or something at 4 a.m. in the morning. And still are up at night and you're making noise and all this. And, you're in a lodge and somebody has to tell you to shut up, you know, things like those. <laughs> <laughs> you're young enough to do those at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so for I think the three or so years at that juncture, mm. I was doing a lot of um, management. Yes, yes. yes. But uh, the basic level. Yes. Which set a foundation for me. One of the activities I used to love was budding, you know. Uh, okay, yeah. So I will see the birds and record them, the English name, but I would also want to know the name in the local. my language. Oh, your my language. language. So, okay. Because I knew them when I was a kid. And yeah. I would, some of them I tried to remember, some of them I send a picture to my brothers and say, hey, what did you used to call this bird? <laughs> that, was, that was a fun thing. Yeah. Until today, I do the same yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. And so your journey has been growing up. Mm. Uh, from the Sarova up, up until the point now you're running one of the grandest establishments. Mm. This particular one, it's quite grand. Yes. Uh, but you didn't start here. Yes. Okay, so just walk us through your journey here. So I was called by uh, a former colleague in one of the mm. places I was working. So they told me, uh, Francis, I have some work for you. At that time, I had now started developing a passion for events, mm. conferencing events and everything. And uh, so it is, and I'd, when I was working with him, I was in the event space. Okay. So he gave me an offer. I said, why not? You know, I came here, I came as a banqueting manager. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Little did I know the monster I was taking up, you know, <laughs> because uh, at that time, White Sands had um, Baraza, Makutano, you know, those are big conference rooms at then. then. Okay. Yeah. One and a half, two years later. Yeah. Uh, the then um, group room and resource manager, uh -huh. the late Mongyo Karaoke, had come for a visit. So he calls me in the office, tells me, look, I want you, I want to grow your career. Yeah, and that was the first time I started seeing Sarova in the way I see it now, as a developer of people. It took me two weeks to see his... Uh, vision uh, for uh, you. His vision. Wow. And then, so he took me to Shaba. 
six months later, I was running Shaba as a GM. That was uh, just after the post-election violence in 007. I was in Shaba. I was, you know, left alone. You know, a team of 20 people. You know, just try and manage the hotel. Yeah. Think about that time. I think that prepared me for uh, mm. COVID. You no, know, God is interesting. Yeah. It puts you in a situation knowing 20 years down the road probably. It will come in handy. Yes. So yes. <laughs> that was what prepared me for yeah. uh, 20, 20. Uh, 2020. Mm. So I ran Shaba to now after the post-election business picks up, you know, uh, we wow. build up a team. And then uh, I think probably one year later, uh, no, more than one year, I think it was about two years almost. Uh, Mwangi says, ah, remember our plan? Yes, your next move is Mara. So I'm sent to Mara. Uh, eight years in the Mara again. Uh, so attended camp, you know, ran it for those eight years. Mm -hmm. Did seriously good things there with the team. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful that in all the locations I've yeah. worked, yeah. the teams I've worked have been super you know yeah. they have held me up yeah, as their manager mm. uh, the my all my iniquities they've uh, <laughs> hidden them. Uh, they've highlighted all my strong points mm. you know and yes i've enjoyed working with uh, the teams in the old place now yeah. from then on i started learning what uh, mwangi was doing yeah, developing teams, developing yes. people from an individual perspective wow. to teams perspective. Wow. So he kept on reminding me of that. He kept on saying, you, you, "You're more than their manager. You are their leader. Mm. We are not looking at you as mm. the manager. You are their leader, and leaders develop people. So I want to know who you have developed. Oh, How wow. have you developed your oh, team?" Wow. Not just the team itself. Yeah. Give me an individual. Tell me this is a person I've grown, I've grown from this point to this point. Yeah. If you don't do that, you're not successful. You know? And that again, you know, you tell me that wow. I'm like, yeah, I have to give you one person. Yeah. You know? So I have to look <laughs> for somebody and really <laughs> push Yeah, them. and push them beyond their push. limits. Exactly. Oh wow. Yeah. But that I think that's an incredible policy for a company to have where yeah. a HRD can actually draw for you your vision plan. Yes. You know, now I understand why the few people I know at Sarova mm. have stayed. Yes. Because your industry, like ours, has such high turnovers, mm. incredibly high, especially for these new brands coming up. But Sarova, you always find the same people. But where they were maybe three, four years ago is not where they are now. Yes. Now I get it. 90-something percent retention. Yeah. yeah I, I can't remember the last statistics. You're 90-something percent retention. And also, look at the industry itself most of the top managers have been in this brand at one point or the other yes in their lives. they attribute yes their growth to yes the brand. to the Sarova brand yes. now i get it that i think companies should adopt that kind of thing yeah yeah because then you also pay it forward to your teams yes so everyone is everyone is just growing it's a mm. brand that's growing mm. okay so francis so you went to the city hotels yes mm. and and then they sent you to run this yes. establishment during a pandemic, a global one at that, not yes. just a Kenyan problem. And you're supposed to be fruitful and multiply, literally, the business. Yes. <laughs> that is, how did you do it? So, I had been running White Sands for a, a year or so, mm -hmm. um, before the pandemic uh, began. Um, we had done a good year, 2019, and we were very enthusiastic about 2020. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting with myself and they're like, we we're all geared, you know, 2020 is going to be the year. The year. <laughs> where people are going to say, White Sands yeah. is a serious, and you know, we have broken into the international um, space. Then, of course, the pandemic happens, we don't, can't believe it, so we start closing slowly but slowly. So, uh, again, I said, uh, our teams is one of the things which uh, drives production. So my team says, Look, um, we have to close. So the company says, you know, uh, we have to not close, but to cease operations uh, because of uh, COVID. So yeah. I, I say, okay. I come back to the team, say, this is what we have to do. 
I say, but this is white sands. This is massive property. If you close it, yeah, how is it going to be? You know, how is it just, you know, people have been passing this place for 40 years. They cannot see this place dark. You know, and that snapped me out of that doom and gloom environment. I was like, start thinking, man. So we sit down and we say, okay, we are going home, most of us, but we will leave a court in mm -hmm. to run the pop. Now, that's when I remembered my uh -huh. uh, Shaba. city, Shaba. Mm -hmm. So I have to leave a manager mm -hmm. and a court in. The hotel has to run. run. Uh, the first thing we, we thought as a team, because we were having every... I think every Friday, hmm. yes, every Friday, we were meeting on Zoom with uh, the management of the yes. of White Sands. Yes. Yes. And I didn't know that after my meeting on Friday with the HODs, your team, yes, the HODs will have a meeting with all the staff on Saturday, which I was not invited. So, so all the staff, whoever could join on Zoom, yes, they would meet just to know about how you doing, how you doing, how are you okay, are you, you know, so. We kept on propping each other wow. up. So my responsibility was actually to my uh, HODs, but they actually translated it to their staff. Wow. And uh, eventually, I think that uh, grew up, grew to, um, you know, we had this, uh, not CSR, but uh, support system mm. for the guys who are not, uh, who are not on payroll, uh, the casuals and everybody. You know, so we would contribute a little, uh, a little bit. Uh, I realized uh, 1,000 shillings in Mombasa could actually buy you food uh, as a person, one person for a month. Yeah. You know, so every month we'd contribute and we'd put uh, a care package a for guys that come collect it oh. from the hotel. Uh, so I was in Nairobi that time with family. I was in Nairobi okay. and there was the team which was on the ground mm -hmm. doing all this. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we were told, okay, the borders are open, guys can start uh, doing this. By then, the team on the ground had prepared the hotel. They had been reading all these um, protocols coming through and they're working on them. And, you know, they're calling me and telling me, boss, we, we have to open this hotel. I'm like, oh, you have only, the president has just announced yesterday. So we are ready. <laughs> we are ready, boss. Uh, no, 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 we have to get the licensing. So oh, my goodness. Our license was 001. Uh -huh. that is, we were the first hotel to be given the license to run. To reopen fully? Yes. Not to reopen. Yeah. So it was not fully, but yeah. to reopen. Yes. With all those restrictions. Yeah. You were given the license to reopen. I mm -hmm. think it was the. I think the second week oh, after wow. the president had announced. Yes. The by then, without knowing, this and something I learned, these um, guys were managing, had called uh, public health. You know, they'd come and inspected this place six times. Six times. Six. They'll, they'll come, they'll tell us this and this and this, correct. They will do the correction. And they, for six times, they came to inspect before they, they opened the, the hotel, before they allowed us to open the Yeah. Place. Yes. You have an incredible team. Yeah. Do you see your life as though, because I, I see it that way, but do you see as though you've come through a full circle moment? You born, raised, bred here, mm. schooled near here, mm. used to come with your parents here for lunch or whatever, and then now you're running. The very same place that yes. you just used to pass as a young boy. Yes. I, I, it's, for me, it's mind blowing. Yeah, sometimes as I sit down and think about it and I review my past, I say, wow. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's been a journey. Yes. Mm. It's, I think it's divinely ordered. That's yes. what I would call it. For sure. Yeah? I do believe it's very you strong. You see that? Yes. Yeah. That I was meant to be here. And things which happened to me when I was growing up, uh, both positive and negative yeah were meant to get me where I'm. to where you are today yes. I love it I, I know that the journey is not over of course yes uh, you know we keep on you're going still very young you have a yeah. couple of many years under mm -hmm. your belt yes. is international in your sights who knows who knows you know who knows okay you know, I, I mean um, I apply my tread wherever it's possible but uh, more than that it's that commitment that I have to develop people, yeah. I have to um, pay it forward for the many chances I got, you know, in life. Uh, from you know when I was a kid, yeah. I could have easily been you know one of those guys who you look at of the window. I, I actually do that a lot of times when mm -hmm. I'm coming, even today when I was coming from the airport. You know, you get that moment of 
you know, but for the grace of God, yes, that could have been me. Yes, you know? yes. So every time, actually, when I pass through Mombasa, yeah. that always flashes in my mind and motivates me to pay. Yeah, yeah. and you're just grateful. Yeah. It actually pushes me to pay. You know, to, 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 to think that I need to get somebody else yeah. from getting yeah. lost this way. Yeah, you know. and guide their path yeah. somehow. I was lucky, you yeah. know, and uh, for sure. I, I was, I've seen enough of my friends and people who grew up who are brilliant people and who got lost along the way. So you know that you are lucky. Yeah. You need to take that. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Okay, so we're winding up the show now. Uh, but before we do, I have some rapid quick fire questions for you. Mm -hmm. You're ready for them. <laughs> Did you have a childhood nickname? Oh, I had enough of them. Oh, you had, <laughs> oh, you had enough of them? Give uh, us one, the one you hated the most. I don't know why guys used to call me Bongo. I Bongo? Yes. What does Bongo mean? Bongo is brains. Oh, brain, like brainy. Brainiac. Well, it was because I was a brainiac. Uh huh. Must just be because, it was because I was really dumb. <laughs> just no, kidding. That's opposite. I, uh, so you're uh, Bongo? At one point. Mm -hmm. Okay, sunrise or sunset? I like both. Actually. Both? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, huh. Are you a morning bird or a night owl? Night owl, definitely. Uh, oh, of course, yeah. What would you do if you won the lottery? How much is the lottery? <laughs> if the lottery can be 1,000 shillings, <laughs> and my charity sweepstakes, 1,000 shillings, I would buy airtime. <laughs> and, okay, let's say a million bob. Uh, I'll do something I've always wanted to do. Which is? There is... Uh, is a father called Reginald Mwanyasi. Okay. Father Reginald Mwanyasi is a good friend of mine. Okay. He runs an orphanage in Bura. Yeah. I think I would do a party there. Oh wow. With the kids in the orphanage. Oh wow. It's a thing my father used to do. That's special. Yeah. Favorite local musician? Local musician. Yeah, local. <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Eh? The running joke is I listen to music of guys who are dead. If you're president for a day, what yes. would your first assignment be? I think change all the <laughs> laws on the environment. Oh! Yeah. Oh, wow. Make them even more pro-environment pro than they are right now. Okay. I think we can do a lot more. Hmm. Okay. Hey, can you knew what I'm about to ask. It's what? coming out so deep, man. Okay. Uh, what are you currently reading? Currently, I'm on Wilbur Smith. Paul Wilbur Smith, series. Ah, okay. okay. I was reading them as a kid, so I have this Kindle. Uh -huh. I realized I could get all the books there. Yeah. Uh, I'm like a kid with it, so I'm, I'm just playing with it. Okay. And I've downloaded all of those Egyptian <laughs> all series. The oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you're not working, which uh, you're, it's all the time you're, you're always working, but when the window opens up and you're not working, what are you doing? When I'm on off, I'm with family. I'm with my family, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Family. I like that. Uh, huh. Favorite female movie character? Ooh. Favorite female movie character? Eish. I don't know. <laughs> Probably her name, this lady. She's black, she's a bit noisy. She's a bit noisy. Yeah. Tiffany Haddish? Gabriel something. Gabriel Union? No, yes. the one who married the basketballer. Gabriel Union, yeah. It's Union, she, eh? Yes, the okay. one who acts uh, action movies. She uh, does she's action? Done, she's done some few action movies. Okay. Um, where she was this assassin or something. Okay. That is Gabriel Union. Oh. <laughs> okay, if you're a pastor for a day, what would your first sermon be based on? I think it should be on death. Death? Yes. Jeez. <laughs> what? Fast you don't want to die. Listen to dead people. No, he wants, you, you want to be die. in a church and preach about death. Yeah, because everybody's afraid of it. <laughs> oh. Me included. Okay. Yeah. So what would you tell the people about death? That we need to embrace it. It's coming anyway. <laughs> You're not getting out of this alive, you know that. <laughs> so you get oh my goodness, to, uh, this to, pastor to, has doom and gloom. Hoka for a day? Who? Hoka. Hoka. What would you be hoking? Uh, Mandazi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
but <laughs> in Mombasa I'll be hawking mandazi. Yeah. What is this thing we eat in Nairobi? Millicent, Nikumbusha, that thing. KDF, it's called. Yes. Oh, KDF is something different. Hey, KDF is an insult to mandazi, man. <laughs> That's not me. I hear people love that thing. I don't know what it tastes like. KDF is an ins it's, it's like somebody who went and really <laughs> did a bad job on Mandazi and then said that. Yeah. And all the people in Nairobi have hated love you it. at this point in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I that. <laughs> and lastly, what was your la worst subject in high school? Physics. <laughs> Jeez. I think I, 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 I really clashed. I think, yeah, Physics. I don't understand those I can yeah. things, yeah. 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 Okay. Actually, there's actually there's a last one. Three travel spots in your bucket list. I think uh, Angkor Wat, then um, Machu Picchu. Where is that? Machu Picchu is some uh, Aztec or some new, some old Mesoamerican. Mm -hmm. of American uh, ruins. Okay. Which were found in 1940 something. Okay. In I think high in some mountains. Uh, Angkor Wat is in in Asia. Okay. Yeah, it's in Asia. Uh -huh. It's a big temple complex. You know, massive temple complex. Okay. Uh, then of course the last will be uh, near the Paternal. It's in Brazil. It's a massive ecosystem. You know, uh, but it's because of uh, those two are you know, mysteries. Yeah. The Angkor Wat and the Machu Picchu. There's a lot of mystery behind those things. Okay. And then the Paternal is biodiversity, massive biodiversity. I hope they will maintain it, mm. the residents or whoever is uh, managing it right now, they'll maintain it. But it's a massive biodiversity which I want to see. So those are the top three places you want to see yes. before you go home. Yes. <laughs> before you preach on death and then go home. Yes, before I get <laughs> preached on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so mm. your very last words of inspiration to uh, people watching, especially career people as well, who may have lost their jobs during the pandemic last mm. year, and everyone is almost finding their footing again. Uh, for people who have lost their jobs or, and or are getting back to their feet, hold on. Uh, life is, is a cycle, you know, things uh, will get better. As uh, you go on with life, uh, things will get better. You reinvent yourself. Uh, whatever you are doing right now, you must have been doing it right. It's one and a half years, you've been doing it right, somewhere, somewhere. And so keep going on, you're taking the right direction. Thank you so much. Karim. Thank you, and thank you for sharing your wonderful story. Santa, Santa. It's, it's been good. You see, it wasn't that bad, was it? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> yes, and... <laughs> Yes and what? It can just be a plain I, yes. You know how we'll know? No. My wife will tell me, I've seen your story. Uh -huh. Here you made a... You know. uh, and now the I man like. puts on his, his tag back. I had asked yes. him to remove it, but now it's back. Yeah. <laughs> but is... thank you for hosting us today. We, we, we have had an incredible time. Mm -hmm. And yes, like the same way you speak highly of your team, so do we. We have witnessed that and uh, keep, keep doing whatever it is that you do that is, you know, taking this place to the next level. Mm -hmm. And all the best with that. Sun, sun. And to you watching Asante Nisana, uh, here from the Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa. Until next week, have yourselves a blessed one. Located along the pristine white sandy beaches of Mombasa, Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa is a luxury and adventure beach hotel. Our beachfront location makes it the ideal place to relax and enjoy all that the Kenyan seaside has to offer. Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa prides itself with 335 guest rooms and recreational amenities including 5 outdoor swimming pools and a sauna. Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa has the finest world-class cuisines from the lavish pavilion restaurant buffets and Lido Lounge's speciality seafood and the a la carte Minazi Cafe. Looking to unwind? The resort has three exquisite bars to experience as the sun goes down including an in-pool bar and the beachfront's Coco's Beach Bar. For the ultimate relief therapy, Tulia Spa offers a wide variety of wellness options and foot reflexology with magnificent panoramic views across the Indian Ocean. 
Also perfect for family getaways, children can enjoy exciting activities at the Angels Playground in the care of the Ozone Kids Club. Sarova White Sands Beach Resort and Spa is the place to be in Mombasa.